I'm gonna show you a few things that I like to use when I'm tarpon fishing. Some lures, live bait, hooks, leaders, all that kind of good stuff. Hey, listen, tarpon's one of my favorite fish to target. They go from this big to 250 pounds, and they're always taking to the air. It's gotta be one of my favorite fish of all time, so stick with me. There's a variety of ways to target tarpon. One of my favorite ways to target tarpon is at sunset, on an outgoing tide or an incoming tide when the bait's coming through, and that's typically where I'm gonna work an area. And one of my favorite things to do is use live bait. I use live crabs, live shrimp, live mullet, pinfish. Those are my four go-to baits. And you wanna match the size of the bait to what's running through the area that you're fishing in. If the crabs are this big, that's what I'm gonna use. You think a tarpon has a mouth this big? They need a giant crab? No, a lot of times they want a crab this big. Then you wanna match your leader to what size tarpon you're fishing for. If you're fishing a 40 to 60 to 80 pounders, I'll use 40 pound fluoro. If you're getting up into the 60 to 100 to 150, I will use 60, sometimes even 80 pound fluoro leader. And of course, I'll have a pair of braid scissors to be able to make really clean cuts so you don't have anything kind of hanging out. I like a nice light wire hook, which is like a 7-0 demon circle, which I love for tarpon, not too big, not too small. I've got 60 pound floral leader with a uni knot, and I'll take this cork, I'll slide it over top of the leader through this slit, and then I'll fasten it and pinch it down with these two ends, and I'll usually keep it four to five, maybe six feet away from the bait. For the main line, I like to use braid. I use 30 pound braid, the 50 pound, all the way up to 80 pounds, just depending on the size of the fish. Now, if you can't get live bait, if you're against live bait, or you're not into live bait, there's a whole host of lures that you can use. And one of my favorites is a fluke. It's a white fluke bait, and it's a weedless setup. And most times, I'll use it without a weight. I'll have it on the surface, and I'll just jerk it, and it just swims and stops, swims and stops, and it pauses, and you reel in the slack, and pop, pop. That bite is spectacular. You can also use topwater lures and do the same motion, kind of like walking the dog. Here we have a couple of uh, swim baits. One of my favorites, this is kind of my all around favorite. Ride it along the bottom, sides are looking up, and we have a nice paddle tail here, paddling along the way. Has nice vibration, the hook's facing up, and they can elicit a strike from a tarpon very easily. Here we have a couple of shrimp-like replicas. This one has a lip on it, so you can get some nice action out of it. And this particular one, pretty much lightweight, and you can work it and move it, let it sink, let it float, let it not do anything, and then work it, move it. These are great lures to have in your arsenal when going out for anything that eats shrimp. I also have weighted baits that'll get down into their depth. I've got jig heads where you can actually drop a jig head with a grub tail on the back or some kind of plastic, soft plastic on the back and you can get bites very easily that way if you drop right into them. But a lot of times, live bait, I'll tell you, it's so good, you, you, it's, it's hard to compete with live bait. This is a perfect size shrimp, not too big, not too small. You can hook a shrimp a variety of ways. You can hook them sideways through this area. You can hook them up through the chin through this area. You can also hook them through the tail up underneath, and you can hook them sideways through the tail. There's a whole variety of ways to hook shrimp. A lot of times, You'll hook it right here through the center. The hook goes in, come up through the top with a circle hook, and that's one of my favorite ways to do it. And you see them, they're very lively. When you're fishing for tarpon in a shallow area, you want to approach quietly and stealthily. We'll use a trolling motor, electric trolling motor, remote control trolling motor, and we'll get a really slow pace going. And I prefer to leave that trolling motor on or off to get into the spot. So when you're in there, you don't want to change the sound, the acoustics of that trolling motor. So I like to keep it at a very low speed and kind of move along. And I look for marks on my fish finder, or I look for fish that are moving through. I look for a little breathing. I'll look for movement on the surface. I'll look for bubbles coming up knowing there's a school down there, or I'll just sight fish for them, seeing them coming by, and I'll present a bait right in front of them, and hopefully they'll fall for it. When I'm fishing for tarpon in deep water, I'm constantly relying on my fish finder. It'll be like going through a desert, 
and all of a sudden you'll just see a stack of them down on the bottom and they're kind of chilling, they're just relaxing and saving their energy. A couple right here, right here, heavy. Other times you'll see them higher up in the water column, then you know where to present your bait. Because if you're fishing at 40 feet and you drop your bait down to 40 feet and your fish finder shows them at 15, you're not gonna get the fish. So we try to present the bait right in their face so they don't have to work too hard to get it. There he is, woo -hoo! Get him, get him, get him. I like fishing, woo! If you have a lot of current, you're gonna be drifting through. So you're gonna have to kind of come through and bring it past them. Basically, we're gonna be drifting down the jetty with the current, with the wind. Right about here, you can just start pitching and let it drift. You wanna bring it into their zone and then you will get a bite. Walk to the front, walk to the front. Nice job, Pete, nice job. If you're fighting a tarpon, when they come up jumping, you want to bow to the fish. A lot of people have heard the term, bow to the silver king. You actually take your rod and push it directly at them, and that shoots a little bit of slack into the line, which allows the hook to stay in the fish when they come up rattling their gills, and you'll have a way better shot at landing that fish and getting it boat side. Let's grab them and pop them off so we can get away alive and safe. You want to release them as quickly as possible because sharks love the taste of tarpon and it's a giant meal. Right there. But that looks like the right stuff to me. It sure does. So right now we're basically just kind of drifting with live mullet on light leader in the dark off the beach. Come on. Oh, there we go, getting ready to load up. There we go, on. Oh my God. If you're lucky enough to get a tarp in both sides, you're gonna want to proceed cautiously. They have a tendency to want to get you wet. They want to slap you in the face. They want to dive away. They're gonna go away jumping. Their head's out of the water. It's really spectacular. You want to wear gloves. A lot of people will take two thumbs, two gloves, and put their thumbs in, and put the fingers under the gills like this and squeeze down super tight. And then maybe somebody else will come and take the hook out, or the fish will shake a few times. They'll kind of chill out. Then you can get the hook out yourself. But we don't bring tarpon in the boat. The rule is 40 inches and under, you can pick it up, take a photo with it, and release it. But you don't want to bring one of these dinosaurs, truly a dinosaur. They are prehistoric. They have air bladders. You do not want to bring one in the boat. It will damage them. They lose scales. It hurts their internal organs. It's not a good thing to do. So the best thing to do, take the hook out, smile up at the camera when the fish is sideways in the water, swim them off, and let them go free to fight another day. <laughs>